Hello, baseball fans. This is Anthony with Bleacher Bum Sports Gaming Network, and we are back with a the second dip of a Saturday night baseball doubleheader. The first one was the payoff pitch Cubs game, in which the Cubs took care of the Cardinals eight and two, eight two two. And now we move to our Strat Time Machine project, the 1922 St. Louis Browns. Look to continue their very, uh, to this point, dominating march through the 1977 American League East as they take on the Boston Red Sox in game two of their series here at Sportsman's Park. Uh, the Brownies defeated the Red Sox 3-2 to two in a rare pitcher's duel. And usually the, uh, the Brownies have been averaging about five plus a game. So the Red Sox had a great opportunity, but they could not get it done against Ray Culp, who uh, pitched masterfully, went to 4-0 for the Browns. So in this one, the current uh, 1922 Brownies are 12-3. They would be in first place in the American League East at this point. Uh, the 1977 Blue Jays, who they are replacing in this replay, were 7-8. and eight. And actually, I have third. They were at fourth at this point, three games back of the Brewers. In real life, in this game played on 425-77, the Red Sox lost to the Blue Jays 4-3. So we will see if history repeats itself just with another team. So our starting lineups for the Red Sox. Uh, just a couple of changes from yesterday's lineup. Rick Burleson leading it off. Steve Dillard gets a nod at second base today. Jim Rice will bat third. It does to be the DH. George Scott and Captain Carl Yaz switch places in the order. Scott moves up to clean up. Yaz down to fifth. Carlton Fist hits sixth behind the dish. Dwight Evans in right field bats seventh. Butch Hobson at third. And Rick Miller, the center fielder, bats ninth. For your 1922 St. Louis Browns, more of the same. Tobin Ellerby, and then the big three, Sisler Williams Jacobson, Marty McManus, Hank Severide, Chick Shorten, Wally Gerber at shortstop, and on the hill for the Brownies tonight is Dixie Davis, their fourth starter, and hoping to benefit from the offensive prowess of the Brownies bats. So with that, let's roll. Burleson is ready to go. Dixie Davis, he says he is too. And our first pitch. And four and a six. That's a hard shot down to third base that Ellerby takes care of. L5, one down. Steve Dillard up. Davis the pitch. And two and a nine. Ground ball down to shortstop. And Gerber takes care of Dillard, two away. Jim Rice designated hitter up. As Dixie Davis, probably the most vulnerable of the Brownies pitchers. He had a 408 ERA in 1922, five and a seven. And that's gonna be a ground ball X. And at second base, McManus, he is a one. So 13, he's gonna make the play. And the Red Sox go down one, two, three in the top of the first inning. We head to the bottom of the first and no score. So Tobin set to lead it off for the Browns and the Brownies, the dangerous lineup here. Features seven regulars who hit over 300, 1922. The pitch from Tion and fours, fly ball center field X. And out there is Rick Miller. He is a one. And that should be no problem. He gets to that, puts it away, one down. So Frank Ellerby steps up now, one away. And pitch is a one and six, and that's a line out to shortstop, so Burleson takes care of that. Two down now, and could we be having a pitcher's duel involving the St. Louis Browns? Much too early to say so. And George Sisler, he'd stand on his head to get a hit, folks. Three and a ten, and that is going to be a single for Sisler. So, Big George, and George, he is the best base stealer on this team. He'll run on six or less, not going to happen, though. 
It's going to give the cleanup Ken Williams a chance to get some hacks here. Two and a five, and Williams singles. And with two outs, Sisler, he's going to try and go to third. 18 to make it easily. So runners at the corners, and I mentioned the uh, four-letter word pitcher's duel, and look what happened. Back-to-back -back singles and Baby Doll up. Baby Doll had a rough game in the opener this series. Two and a four, and he's going to ground it down to Hobson and get off to a not-so-conspicuous start in this one. So the Brownies, they get a lot of hits. They got two in the first, but they cannot play to anybody. We're heading to the second inning, no score. Leading it off for the Red Sox. Boomer, George Scott in the cleanup position. Here comes a pitch, two and 11. Scott, ground ball down to second base. That was very, very anticlimactic, Big George. Give you that good buildup. The hype man, and you ground out to second base. Yastrzemski, four and an eight. And that's going to be a fly ball to right field, two down. So Davis, perfect through five batters. Something is a miss here. Carlton Fist steps up and four and a six and line out to third. So Dixie Davis, not just whistling Dixie on the mound. He is pitching six up, six down for the Sox. And we head to the bottom of the second inning. Still no score. Marty McManus, a hard-hitting second baseman, steps in, and six and a seven for Tion. That's a ground ball down to second base. And for the Red Sox, Dillard is a four. He's not too swift there at second. And that is going to be a single. Cannot get to that. So the Brownies have their third hit of the afternoon, and McManus... Going to mess around down there, try and get a lead. He does not. Hank Severi, the catcher, up. One and an eight, and Seve, split chance there. And 13 is going to be a single. Runners advance two. So Al Capitan is in trouble here as this hard-hitting Browns lineup. Once again, has the lumber working. And Chick Shorten also likes to stand on his head. The Browns have taken up yoga since arriving in 1977. Here comes a pitch, two and a five, and the sacks are loaded with the walk. Nobody out. Wally Gerber, chance to break the ice here. Tiant needs something big to happen. Two and an eight, and that's a pop out to third base. That will qualify as a start. But far from danger as we head to the top of the order. One down, sacks loaded, Jack Tobin up. And the Brownies right fielder is a dangerous hitter. He hit 331 in 1922, one and a 10. And danger indeed, Tobin. It's deep, it's far, it is gone. Grand slam home run and the Browns. The simple flick of the bat, take a 4-0 lead. Tobin got every single stitch of that one. Coming in to score is McManus, Severi, and Shorten. And the way Dixie Davis is pitched, four runs might be enough, but I'm sure the uh, Browns have some more lurking in their bats. Six and a seven. That's going to be a ground ball down to Dillard. The aforementioned not too good second baseman commits the error, boots it. So Ellerby on now, E4. And last thing you want to do to this team, one of the most prolific hitting teams in Major League history, is give them free outs, especially with George Sister coming up. The Hall of Famer, two and a nine, and that's a single. Runners advance two. So over to third base goes Ellerby. And no action in the Red Sox bullpen. They're going to try and ride Tion a little bit further. One down. Ken Williams up. Runners at the corner. One and an eight. Ground ball down to first base. And that's a huge double play right there. 3-6-3 three, three on the turn. But the Browns break through in a big way. They collect four hits and four runs, leave a couple runners left. The big shot, the grand slam by Jack Tobin. And we have two innings in the books, 4-0 Browns. 
So now the Bo Sox are tasked with fighting back against Dixie Davis, six and a seven, ground ball down to shortstop, and Gerber is a two. Uh, two and a two, and that's gonna be a single. So first hit of the game, and it's because Gerber cannot get to it. So him and Dixie Davis exchange a few words. Davis back on the bump. Butch Hobson up. Here comes a pitch and four to nine, and that's going to be a fly ball to center field. Runners hold, one down. Number nine hitter in the order, center fielder Rick Miller steps in. 6-11, that's going to be a fly ball to right field with an error check. Tobin is a two. Dos Equis and 19 is going to be a roll again. No, my bad, not roll again. 19, he gets to that. So a nice running catch by Tobin, who is also the offensive hero thus far. And that brings us back to the top of the order for Slick Rick Burleson. Here comes a pitch from Dixie Davis. One and a three, and that's a ground ball down to second base. So Davis gives up a hit. Not really his fault. And if this game continues, I'm not saying he will... Uh, be carrying a no-hitter, but if it gets to that point, that could loom large. Tiant back on the mound, and stepping in is Baby Doll Jacobson, 3-11, and 11, and that's going to be a fly ball to center field, one down. Always good when you can get through that part of the order, but the Browns are loaded. McManus up 6-10, and a 10, and that's going to be a ground ball down to second base, two away. There really are no easy outs in this lineup, save maybe uh, Ellerby. Six and a three, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field. And out there, Dwight Evans is a one. And runs that one down. So three up, three down for Tiant. And the Brownies suffer the indignity of a whole inning with no hits. They only have six through three thus far. And we're heading to the, holy cow, heading to the top of the fourth inning in these lineups. Score St. Louis four, Red Sox zero. Pitch from Davis to Dillard and five eight and Dillard gets a hold of that one. It is deep, deep and it is off the wall. That's going to be a stand-up double for Diller to lead off the fourth. So we don't have to worry about what-ifs with that no-hitter. That was a solid shot right there. That brings up Jim Rice with a chance to get the Bow Sox on the board. And five and a nine. And again, Rice rips that one. And that's going to be a triple. So that rattles around down in the corner. The Browns chase it down. Meanwhile, Rice ends up at third. Coming in to score is Steve Dillard. And just like that, the Sox strike, and they are on the board. It is four to one, top of the fourth inning. Boomer George Scott wants to get at least that run home from third. One and an eight. And Scott, he's gonna get it done. The sharp single back up the middle there. Jim Rice trots home, and the Sox have sliced this deficit in half, four to two now. And Scott on first base, he will not try and run. Captain Carl up now, nobody out still. Runner on first base, here comes a pitch, 6'10", fly ball to center field, runners hold. One down. Carl Fisk up. 44 and Fisk, he's gonna get a hold of that one and wrap that one into left field. That's gonna be a single runner's advance two. So at the corners and Dixie Davis is now finally pitching more like a hurler with a four plus ERA. As two are in, two are on, only one down and Dwight Evans steps in. Six and a nine and that's going to be a fly ball to left field. And that should be runner on third scores. Uh, I should have this chart memorized, I apologize. And runner on third scores, other runners hold. So the sack fly there by Dewey.
and two down, but it is now a one-run ball game. Carlton Fist still on at first base. Butch Hobson up. Red Sox third baseman and some practice cuts. Two and a ten, and that's going to get down. And Hobson has a double into the gap. And Bo or Carlton will be 1-15 to 15 to try and score. You know he's going to try and score. And just gets in under the throw there from Baby Doll Jacobson. And this game is tied up. So a big two-out double there by Butch Hobson has knotted this at four. And Rick Miller up with a chance to give the Red Sox a lead. And one and a nine, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field. Can't get it done. But the Red Sox come through. Five big hits, four runs. And we're heading to the bottom of the fourth inning, and we are all tied up at four, folks. So Luis Tiant, he's got a clean slate now, and he's facing Chick Shorten, who walked his first time up. One and eight, he's going to do it again. So Chick Shorten takes four wide, down to first base he goes. He will try and steal on a roll of two. Wally Gerber the batter. Pitch from Tiant and, make sure his card is within the screen here. Uh, pitch from Tiant is a two and a five and that's going to be a single runner's advance two. And that is going to bring the Red Sox bullpen to life. They have seen far too much of this. And they're going to get Don Ossie up in a long relief role. Ossie did have some starts in 1977. So top of the order, two on, nobody out. Runners at the corners, three and a five. And that's going to be a ground ball down to second base. And the Sox are going to concede the run and take the double play, four, six, three. And no RBI for Tobin on that. And the Brownies edge back in front, five to four with Frank Ellerby up. Two outs, bases clean, three and a six. And ground ball down to short, Burleson up with it. Over to first base, so we're hitting a run for the Browns here in the bottom of the fourth inning. We head to the top of the fifth, it's 5-4 St. Louis. Dixie Davis facing Burleson, top of the order. And 5-11, that's going to be a fly ball to right field. And 1, and Tobin is a 2, and he gets to it. So another nice running catch by Tobin, 1 down. Steve Dillard up in Dillard, opened the floodgates the last inning with a leadoff double. Davis aware of that. Here comes a pitch, four and a six, and lines it hard, but right at Ellerby, two away. Jim Rice up, designated hitter, one and a four, and it's going to be a ground ball down to Ellerby. Five, three on the put out there over to Sisler, and Davis back on track. Three up, three down for the Bow Sox, heading to the bottom of the fifth inning, still five, four, and Teon still on the mound to face George Sisler. Uh, three and a nine there, and that's going to be a single. So you get in a Sisler's three column, and you're pretty much giving up a hit. So Sisler, we're going to see if he's going to steal, does not get the jump. And Red Sox manager on the phone to the bullpen, and Teon's going to have a real short lease here. Three and 11, ground ball down to second base. And up with that is Dillard, flips it to Burleson over to first base to Scott, 4-6-3, double play, and that is a big one. Inducing a twin killing from the Brownies. Ken Williams' hashtag should be in the Hall of Fame. So two outs, nobody on for Baby Doll Jacobson. One and a ten, and that's going to be a pop-up to Burleson, and Tion gets out of it. So leadoff single does not come back to bite him, and we are through five innings, still 5-4 Browns. Dixie Davis facing George Scott now, leading off the sixth inning for the Sox. Scott single score, drove in a run, five and a two, and that's going to be a ground ball, I'm sorry, fly out to center field. 
So Jacobson puts that away, one down. Captain Carl up, two and an eight, and Carl Yastrzemski, deep and gone over the green monster, a solo shot, no doubt about that. And only Neil Armstrong's gonna catch that one because that was a moonshot, folks, and we are tied again. So the Red Sox strike quickly here in the sixth inning. Carlton Fisk up. 2-8 and 2-8. And an That's going to be a ground ball down to Ellerby. Up with it over to Sisler. Two down. Dewey Evans now set to hit. And 3-8 and eight as we go back and forth. Struck him out. Our first of the ball game. So the Bo Sox knock things up with a solo shot by Captain Carl. An absolute rocket out of here. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning, all tied up at five. And Marty McManus set to lead it off. Tion still on the mound. One and an eight. That's a ground ball down to third base. And I apologize. Hopefully the shadow does not obstruct the view there. Five three on the put out. One down. Up next, Hank Severide, the pitch from Tiant, 5'10", and that's a catcher's card. And 11, and Fisk is a 1. Foul out, so 2 down. And Severide pops up to his counterpart. And 1922's first and only designated hitter, Chick Short, and he's walked twice, 2 and a 10. And that's going to be a ground ball down to first base. Boomer. Looking like a gazelle down there. And it's a three up, three down inning for Tion. So we head to the seventh inning. And we are tied at five. So Davis. Still on the mound. And in the Browns bullpen. Looks like both teams are going to get some uh, activity going. Hub Pruitt up. And Don Ossie has set down in the Red Sox bullpen now. And up in his place. Holy, five plus ERA is bad, man. Uh, Bob Stanley's going to get up. And Bill Campbell starts to stretch as well. So Butch Hobson leading off the seventh inning here against Dixie Davis, four and a nine. And that's going to be a fly out to Baby Doll. One down, and bottom of the order, Rick Miller. He has flown out to right field twice. Tobin ready just in case. Five and an eight, and there we go. Miller rips this one, and it is deep and off the top of the wall. He's going to have to settle for a double, but he got every bit of that one. Square Davis up and rocketed that one off the monster. So top of the order now, runner in scoring position, and Pruitt. Davis, if he does not get through this batter, I think Pruitt will be coming into the game. Burleson, the pitch. 1-7, pops him up. That's a huge out there. So two down now, and Steve Dillard up. Davis stays on the hill for the Browns. Three and an eight. And Dillard, ground ball down to Ellerby over to Sisler and gets out of it. Leaves a runner stranded at third. And we head to the bottom of the seventh at the old ball game. That is for you, Chris Stratomatic Delaware. And check out Chris's channel. He currently has the 61 Project underway. Mickey Mantle and... Roger Maris in their quest to run down Babe Ruth and 60 home runs with the 1961 Yankees. Uh, thus far, though, I believe it is Yogi Berra that actually leads the team. Uh, four home runs, I believe, uh, based on the last game I saw. So, again, Chris does a great job there at Stratomatic Delaware. So, if you have a chance and have not subscribed, subscribe to him and check him out. Great job with the baseball videos. So bottom of the seventh inning now, and Tiant, he is going to be replaced. So coming in will be the vulture, Bob Stanley. 
and Tian. I'm going to get six innings out of him. Actually did not pitch that poorly. Uh, got roughed up in the second, but did as well as most uh, pitchers do against this Browns team. Gave up eight hits, four runs. All of them earned a very big home run uh, to Jack Tobin. And Tiant walks two and does not manage to fan anybody. So he heads to the showers and to one of his fine Cuban cigars and Bob Stanley will take the mound now to face Wally Gerber to start the seventh. And one of seven pops him up to second base and Dillard puts that away. F4, one down, back to the top of the order. And Jack Tobin, the man of the hour, the man with the power, a four run circuit shot back in the fourth inning, four and a nine. And Stanley's going to give up the single to him this time. And Tiant, uh, actually that would have been a split triple-double on Tiant's card, so a managerial decision pays off for moi. Frank Ellerby up, and I'm sorry, first we have to see if Tobin is going to steal. He needs a three, he's not going. Frank Keller will be up now, 5-7, and that's going to be a ground ball down to second base. And second baseman Dillard is horrible. He's a 4. 7-4, uh, and, and wow, he does it again. Mr. Dillard's second error of the day. So E4 now. And the Brownies, and also Ellerby was the one who benefited from his first error. So Brownies, one down, runners on first and second, and George Sisler, and you want to keep it out of a three column here. Four and a five, and that's going to be a ground ball down to short. Burleson is a little bit better than Dillard. Can he take care of this? Eight and a two, and Burleson, a big six, four, three double play. Gets his keystone made off the hook there, and the Red Sox are out of the seventh inning with no damage. They give up a hit, strand one, and we're heading to the eighth inning, still knotted up at five. And Dixie Davis, and Davis is going to get the shower. The Browns' bullpen is sparse, but most of their starters have done an excellent job. Urban Shocker, their ace, has four complete games in this replay. So they are also very, very well rested. So Dixie Davis, he's going to go seven innings as Pruitt takes his place. And Davis, he also really... Davis pitched real well. He had the fourth, which was a very rough inning. Gave up five hits. Uh, the rest of the time, only three more. So eight hits over seven innings. And he gives up five runs, as Tion did. I think I said Tion gave up four. He gave up five. All of his runs are earned. And he has one K and does not walk anybody. No, nope. no free passes, and he also gave up a home run. So this one is in the hands of the bullpens as Pruitt faces Jim Rice. Here we go, 4-6, and that's going to be a single. And let's see if this managerial decision paid off. 4-6 on Davis's card would have been a line out. I can't go a full game and make all the right calls. Jim Rice on to lead off the eighth. And tie game. Rice needs a roll of two to try and run. Thank God he did not get that. That brings up Boomer. Nobody out. One on. Two nine. Boomer. A big cut. Struck him out. Nothing but air. Making the mighty Casey look artistic as he twists himself up on that breaking ball. One down, runner at first, and Captain Carl homered his last time up, 6-7. And that's going to be a ground ball down to shortstop. And Gerber is a two. T 
10 and a two, and Gerber, a two base error. He throws that away, and the Browns have played pretty solid defense during this replay, and that looms large. As runners now on second and third with only one out and the dangerous Carlton Fisk up. Fisk hit 315 in 1977. Pruitt gets a sign, comes home, 6-8, and 6-8's a fly ball to left field, and that is going to get the go-ahead run home for the Red Sox. As Jim Rice comes in to score on the sacrifice fly seven, one RBI for Fisk, and that will be an unearned run for Pruitt. As that error, that would have been the third out without the error. So Dewey Evans up now, runner on second base, two down. Here comes the pitch from Pruitt, and 3-8 is going to be a strikeout. Big swing and a miss, so Pruitt whiffs two in the inning, but a huge error. Comes back to cost the Browns, and they head to the bottom of the eighth inning in a position they have not been in much lately, trailing six to five. And Bill Campbell. Campbell is up and loosening up. He's definitely going to be asked to save this. Uh, they want one more inning from Stanley if they can get it. Ken Williams up. Two seven, and Williams. Williams is going to drive that off the wall and a double to lead off the inning. And just what you would expect from this Browns team. They get down, they come back flailing away and hitting the ball. Baby doll up, runner in scoring position, one and a six. And Jacobson gets a hold of this one. Is it? Oh, just misses a home run. A deep fly ball to left field. And that's going to stay in the park for Yastrzemski to put away. Runners hold. Williams scampers back to second base. And that, folks, had the fans holding their breath. A big shot by Baby Doll. Just got under it, though. Marty McManus up now. The pitch. And 2 and a 10. McManus is going to tie this up. And that's a double coming into score is Williams and Marty McManus. Just when you think you've gotten through the tough part of the order, someone else comes up to hurt you. And Hank Severide now, one down, runner in scoring position. Five and a six, and that's going to be a fly ball to center field, runner's hold. So two down, Chick shorten up, the designated hitter. He's 0 for 1. He has walked twice and scored a couple, though. One and a 10, and that's going to be a single. And go ahead, run. McManus, 1 to 16 with two outs. Here comes the throw, and he's in easily. So the vulture, Bob Stanley, cannot hold the lead, and the Browns strike again. 7 to 6. Back and forth we go. Trading blows, 2 and 5. That's going to be a single. Runners on first and third. And they are leaving Stanley in to face Tobin. They wanted to bring in uh, Campbell with a save opportunity. But Tobin can put this out of reach. Two and a ten, pops him up. That's a huge out. Pop out there to Dillard, but the Browns on the ropes. They come back firing two runs on four hits. Leave a couple, and we head to the last frame, and the Brownies now lead this one 7-6. to six. And this one's coming down to the wire, folks. So the Red Sox, it's going to be Hops and Miller, and back to the top of the order for Burleson. Hub Pruitt now stands to get the victory here. He was victimized by an unearned run last inning that would have given him the loss. And one and a six to Hobson, struck him out. Pruitt's third. So Hub Pruitt throwing BBs. One down now. Rick Miller up. Pruitt kicks, delivers, six five, and walks him. And I'm going to tell you right now, they've already sent the signal. Nobody up in the St. Louis bullpen. This is Hub Pruitt's to lose. They're going to ride and die with Pruitt here. One away, Burleson up, here comes the pitch. 
And 5'11", that's going to be a fly ball center field X, baby doll. Baby doll lurking out there is a 1. And 7 and a 1, and he runs that down. And nice play by Jacobson, 2 away. And the Sox down to their last out, and it is Steve Dillard. And it looks like we might have a pinch hitter here. Hey, why not? Bernie Carbo is going to loosen up and come out to pinch hit for Dillard. Carbo had some dramatics himself a couple of years ago in the 75 World Series. Everyone remembers Fisk's home run, but Bernie Carbo, his was key. So Carbo loosens up. And steps in. Pruitt talks to Severide. They have their single straight. This is it. Two down. Runner on first base. Pruitt the pitch to Carbo. And two and an eight. And struck him out. Pruitt. Strikes out four in two innings of work. And that, folks, is the ball game. The Bo Sox put a runner on but cannot plate him. And this one, an exciting back and forth contest. Two heavyweights slugging it out. Final score, St. Louis 7, Red Sox 6. And final line score for the Red Sox. They had 6 runs on 9 hits, 2 errors. And the Brownies They just continue to pound the ball. Seven runs on 13 hits and one error. And four big hits coming in the eighth to put the tie in and go ahead or winning run across. So this one is all over again. 7-6. Browns come back to win after the Red Sox came back on them to tie and then take the lead. Uh, this, this is a side exciting series. So we will be back with the third game of this. And player of the game in this one. Uh, probably have to be you know Sisler had three hits but really didn't produce anything uh, we got to go with Marty McManus he actually had the game winning RBI went uh, two for four single double scored two runs so Marty McManus is your POG in this exciting Browns comeback so until next time, keep rolling for the fences. Have a good night. See ya.